Welcome to our special edition of Inside Asia. Today I'm with Dr. Pong Sak Huntrakun, Senior Research Fellow at Saksint. Dr. Pong Sak has been involved very closely with the preparation of the competitiveness report of Thailand, working with the World Economic Forum. สวัสดีครับดรพงศักดิ์สวัสดีครับคุณธงครับ uh, We are going to discuss the latest report of the World Economic Forums on Thailand's competitiveness. It appears that we are doing worse rather than better. Um, Thailand now is ranked 30th uh, in the world. We dropped two places from last year, and we dropped 10 places since 2006. The main weakness we have is in public institution. You mean the Thai? Uh, public no longer have trust in our institutions. In our report, it will say that two thirds of um, uh, our institution are weak, and people have a little trust in politician and lawmaker. Mm. That is the uh, main weakness here. Mm. The uh, strength that we have is have been going on for a while. It have to do with our physical infrastructure. Mm -hmm and it have to do with our good and labor market. Mm -hmm. Our good and labor market, if you can see, have been uh, fairly stable and improving. Uh, the thing that we are actually uh, a little bit better this year is have to do with develop the cluster of the uh, business environment. Mm -hmm. We are ranked 34th now. Mm -hmm. The thing that we are doing uh, very poorly and it's the biggest track in our economy is our quality of primary education. Mm -hmm. We rank 80th mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. behind Vietnam, behind Indonesia even. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this finding serves as a wake-up call for not only for the public sector but also for the private sector to make adjustment? Of course, that is the main purpose of uh, doing an uh, annual report every year. I mean, basically, we want to measure the improvement or the digression on how we are developing. This is supposed to be a tool for policy maker, mm -hmm. a tool for public and a tool for private uh, sector to somehow correct whatever is our weakness. Mm. And so what strengthen. exactly is the competitiveness try to measure or try to determine? We have 12 pillars. Mm. And we divide this 12 pillar into three main type of state of economy. Mm -hmm. One, the, the basic requirement for the low income country. And then for the middle income is efficiency and enhancement. And the last one would be for high income uh, economy. And then we weighted all these factor. Mm -hmm. So these are the 12 pillars that the World Economic Forum have uh, come up with to, to, to measure. Yes, this is how we're going to measure what drive productivity of Thailand and one nation. So what should we be concerned with? See, if you see the red color, mm. that is the one that we are uh, warning that uh, the government or the nation have to improve. Mm. Number one is the um, institution, public institution. Mm. Uh, we are slipping from 57 to 60, this year 64, right? Mm. Our primary education is getting worse from 58, 61, and 80 uh, in the world. Do you think uh, that the political turmoil that we have been facing over the past uh, uh, three, four years have, to do, have anything to do with this? Of course, mm -hmm. because if you will see later on in a slide that uh, there is little trust of politician and lawmaking process here. Mm. And that make the uh, uh, public institution weakening. Let's see. Okay. The, uh, the brown color is like warning sign. Uh, higher education and innovation. If we do not careful, it will deteriorate further. Okay. The black color is a thing that we more or less doing fine. Uh, basically, like market size, basically our market is constant, did not increase that much. Uh, our business sophistication is slightly stable, but have more room to improve. Mm -hmm. Of all these pillars, which is Thailand's you know, strongest point? The strongest point for me would be on labor market, mm -hmm. because our labor market is quite flexible, and we also have uh, foreign uh, labor that come in and then uh, help 
us make it strong. Uh, in 2008, we have uh, we ranked 13 in the world, and in uh, this year we ranked 24 in the world. We're mm -hmm. slipping a little bit, but still far ahead uh, of the peer. Mm -hmm. But wage in this country hasn't increased, you know, over the past few years. That is correct. The wage increase or minimum wage should reflect the productivity of the country. Mm -hmm. You cannot simply increase the uh, minimum wage mm -hmm. at your will. Mm -hmm. You have to increase according to how much uh, each worker or on average worker can produce. Mm -hmm. So productivity have a lot to do with this wage increase. Mm -hmm. I've heard so, that wage in Vietnam or in China uh, is, is increasing even faster than Thailand. That's imply that the workers are actually uh, have increasingly more productive than we are. Mm. That is the whole point of this exercise. Mm. Okay. So overall, we are doing quite all right in terms of macroeconomic uh, I stability. I would say overall, our private sector are doing all right. The problem lies more in the public sector. That's so correct. That's what you mean. That's correct. Mm. Now, if you can see, Kun Thanong, that uh, Thailand is ranked 38. The number one in the league in Asia is Singapore. Mm -hmm. okay. Number three? Number three in mm -hmm. the world. And China have increased to uh, 27. Mm -hmm. If Thailand do not careful, mm -hmm. in the next 10 years, we might so be behind uh, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with this ranking? No. Thailand can do much better than this, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. We used to be like 27 in the world. Why we are dropping down to 38? If you notice that uh, we have mentioned uh, China is improved by two rank to 27. India have slipped into uh, rank to 50, uh, 51. And then Thailand is 38. Vietnam have been the biggest winner this mm. year. Mm. It's improved by, I think, 18 position. Mm. What is the main reason that has contributed to Vietnam's uh, increase in its competitiveness? It's a lot have to do with the put the macroeconomic house in order. Mm. Their macroeconomic have improved significantly mm. in the last 12 months. Right after but I've heard that they have devalued the dong and they also have problems with inflation. That's correct. But they are much better than uh, 2008 when they have a big crash mm. right after the uh, uh, Lehman, Lehman Brothers crisis. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So the country is now on a stage of recovery? Uh, I would say so. I would mm. say so. Mm. The, uh, the country that you should be watching next is Indonesia. Mm. It's the second biggest uh, gainer for this survey. Mm -hmm. It's gained about 10 positions. Mm -hmm. And um, they have been improved significantly across the board in terms of quality of primary education. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, Indonesia is a country to watch. Has politics uh, anything to do with this? Because uh, Indonesia over the past couple of years seems to be able to achieve a certain degree of political stability. Well, you keep saying about politics and all this. Mm. What I would like to say for one thing, um, the World Economic Forum Executive Opinion Survey is indifferent of what kind of form of the government we have. You have not noticed Chinese is like socialist, Vietnamese is still communist type, you know, and then you have one party type of government In like Singapore, Singapore like mm. Singapore. Mm -hmm. So essentially, uh, what we care in this survey is basically um, a stable and effective government. Mm -hmm. When you're asking me that question over Indonesia, the answer is yes, a lot has to do with stable and effective government mm. in order to improve our competitiveness. Mm. But it's not the only thing though. Mm. The main, uh, the, the contrary example would be Korea. It's one of the OECD country and rank almost a uh, top country in terms of innovation mm -hmm. and in terms of growth. But still, they are the worst kind of uh, politics. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Korean uh, pe people... So is this a contradiction that a country with innovation, very vibrant export sector, but then the political system is quite lousy? Well, it's not a contrary. But basically, there's so many ways you can uh, improve your competitiveness. Mm. You can have so-called private sector lead, like mm. Cape Korea. Mm. Have you heard of Chae Bo? Mm -hmm. uh, basically, big comrade control everything mm. and then manage everything, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's why 
you see a large group of corporations doing so well, and then it's supposed to trickle down to people. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, uh, politicians somehow have to serve the need of people, but at the end, people do not trust them because mm -hmm. they, send, they, they send to serve large corporations mm -hmm. better than uh, uh, well, social welfare. Mm -hmm. So in short, uh, the form of government is not that important. What matters is how governments deliver. Then there's another way. Another way is when you have a big government mm -hmm. who are in charge of everything, and then they are doing a very good job in allocation and resources and improving social welfare like mm -hmm. China, like mm -hmm. Singapore, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a lot of way to uh, improve your competitiveness. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter it's a what do you call white cat or black cat as long as you catch the mouth. Remember what uh, Tan Sui Ping said. ASEAN is moving uh, further in economic integration. By That's the right. year 2015, we're going right. to have a free trade area here. So the competitiveness in ASEAN as a whole does matter. I think the free trade area is here now. Uh, it started 1st of January. Mm. What you mentioned is AEC, uh, mm. which is a different story. ASEAN is basically divided into two tiers. One is the top tier where you have like ASEAN 4 and they are ranking on, uh, you can see my say 26, mm. Indonesia 44th, mm. Thailand 38th and Vietnam 59. Mm. Singapore is a class by itself, mm. the third in the world and it's mm. a city, city stage. Mm. So basically it doesn't involve them much. But what I would say is the same logic when you look at the 12 pillars for ASEAN. Mm. The brown color meaning um, institution, you have to uh, be careful. Mm. Infrastructure, we are doing good. The uh, primary education, overall ASEAN for is 40, 40th, mm. which is not bad, except Thailand. Mm. And that's group, actually Thailand is outliner here. Mm. India has done poorly. Mm. Um, Essentially, they have a large population mm. and a lot of people still cannot read and write. Mm. I think their literacy, literacy rate is over 20% mm. uh, of their population. Mm. That is a big hurdle mm. for them. Mm. Then, uh, um, as always, good market and labor market efficiency is um, compatible to China and we also beat India in that sense. Mm. Um, so overall, India is still have some time to go before uh, it uh, will be able to catch up with ASEAN. And on the other hand, ASEAN will have to compete against China. And looking at the statistics, it appears that the Chinese are doing much better. That's correct. Mm. The um, Indian is basically still a low income country, depend on their factor. Um, it's a lot, a long way to go in terms of development, but at the same time, they have a large population, mm -hmm. which actually can complement us. Mm -hmm. uh, China and ASEAN have gone a long way. We are moving down from low income to middle income country. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are going to efficiency enhancer. We need to have a reform in terms of um, factor market pricing. Mm -hmm. Basically, let the market uh, determine the um, price of a, a you know wage, uh, electricity, and you know energy and uh, food cost. We should not subsidize it, and then let Indian to uh, supplement us with their abandoned labor, mm. uh, abandoned uh, resources. Mm. That would be the way to. Uh, to think I'm of surprised it. with China's ranking uh, number four in terms of macroeconomic stability. Does the uh, abundance of its international reserves have anything to do with this? And I'm not surprised with this market size number two in the world because of the more than one billion uh, uh, population there. But the macroeconomic stability, can you explain to us a little bit? Well, essentially, you are right because uh, uh, China have accumulated a lot of um, foreign reserves. 
I think it's well over two trillion mm. US dollar, mm. and they have managed mm. their country very well. Mm. They try to solve lending their uh, uh, property market, mm. their stock market. By the way, uh, the biggest uh, increase for China this year is financial market. Mm. That's why their ranking has improved to a point. Essentially, what they did in the last 12 months and in the next coming 12 months is that they are. Uh, consolidate mm. their stock market mm. and their stock market have been uh, ex uh, quite hot last year and this year uh, turned out to be all right mm. um, the property uh, market is still a worry but mm. they have a series of measures to uh, cool it down yeah. so their macro stability is there mm. right? so there's somebody yeah. who always fine tuning it all the time. Within ASEAN, we are not only having growing economic integration, but we are also involving doing more trade with China. If you look at the volume of trade between Thailand and China, it has been increasing significantly over the years. And how do you see ASEAN and China's integration or more involvement in terms of economic cooperation and, and financial cooperation you know, going forward? This is a natural process. Um, among ASEAN nations, we have um, uh, from very little export to China to very large dependent uh, export to China. Mm. A country like um, uh, Singapore and country like Thailand, we are reprocessing and then uh, ship it out to uh, China for their own domestic market and for their re-export also. So this integration, uh, this more trade between China and ASEAN will affect ASEAN country differently and is vary according to stage of economic of development of mm. each country. Mm. Essentially, this is um, sort of give you some ballpark of what's going on in terms of point. Uh, in the survey, it will start from one and then uh, if you have a perfect score, it's seven. Mm. So the point that uh, the passing point will be four. It's mm -hmm. this circle. Mm -hmm. If you notice, ASEAN passed almost everything except innovation. Mm. But we, we are doing, you know, at par, at mm. average, on primary education, mm. quality of health, mm. effectiveness of uh, reducing poverty, mm. except case of Thailand, though. Mm -hmm. Still, we're doing very poor. Mm -hmm. I would like to address this question in uh, income distribution. Our countries seem to be uh, doing was off, you know, in terms of increasing the living standard of the majority of the people. Even though we are having more export, we are having more trade, and our GDP is growing very fast this year, 7%, 8%. But what happened to the latest state, you know, of the income distribution? The PBS care very much about people and people being. Mm. We have done survey and from my um, close investigation, mm. I learned that the root cause of this um, uh, Thailand uh, poverty um, uh, reduction and poverty um, uh, income in inequality is in uh, basic education. Mm. The quality of basic education for rural sector, I mean rural area and mm. in metropolitan like in Bangkok mm. are far different. Mm. So when you have an initial human capital mm. which is supposed to be provided by Thai government mm. are vastly different. Mm. It's no wonder why if you are born in Northeast, mm. you are likely to be earn about a third whatever who is, was born in uh, Bangkok. Mm. Because initial investment, in initial human capital mm. that you receive are vastly different. So you see a correlation between education, access to education, or quality of education with income. Yes, the access of education are different because we are now have free education. The problem we have to focus is quality of education. Mm. Well, what we should learn is that, is that um, our primary education is very uh, is worse off when you compare to uh, uh, ASEAN four, mm. but our higher education, particularly on school management like mm. Sasin, mm. 
it's not that bad. Mm. When you look at the survey, it come out slightly above a Asian four. Mm. The big guess thing that we find out, the big difference between the primary and the higher education is that in higher education in Thailand, we have openness, we have um, foreign engagement, mm. like Sassin have to have an accredit from mm. uh, international institution, mm. and also we, are, we have an uh, incentive mm. to compete among each other. We have a, a world university ranking. And okay. ranking. So what exactly is the problem with our primary education? Is money the problem? I've heard that the government has been pouring in massive amount of money into the education ministry, probably about 20% of the total budget. But still, our education has not improved. What's the main problem there? Throwing money at the problem is not going to solve anything. Mm. It's not going to solve anything. Mm. The um, Thai government... Do you think that most of, the uh, most of the money goes into the hardware, into the building, into the equipment, rather than in the software, you know, rather than qualified teachers or education environment to improve you know, the quality of education for our children? From, from this survey, uh, it's hard for me to say. But from my personal view, I would say this. Um, a lot of spending is not in terms of improving quality of education. Most of them is a waste. Then. Well, when you say waste, in what sense? If there's a waste for improving uh, education, no. But if it's uh, a waste to improve quality of education, yes. If we cannot get our political system in order, then you don't expect to get, to get a public, good public services mm. like education and health, right? Mm. If you so see, our political system is like a locomotive to drive the country ahead. We don't, we, we don't have the right political system there. Forget about everything. <laughs> no, I, I would not say that, but I would say this. At the moment, our political system is a drag. Mm. Uh, people do not trust politicians. Mm. Thailand is in here. ASEAN is there. Mm. ASEAN have a weakness in in uh, political system but mm. thailand is the worst in mm. in this case mm. from us in for right from the survey mm. and the law making body which is uh, parliament is also among the worst or the worst mm. in uh, asian mm -hmm. now if you don't put this act together then it's difficult if you want to go on with the political process but what we should notice is our legal framework and another survey also suggests that our legal, um, our judicial process, it actually free or little corruption going on. Mm. We have a higher score than uh, uh, ASEAN 4 or among the Asia even. So what you should do in the political sense is what can the executive branch mm. and the legislative branch mm. can learn from judicial branch. Mm. Uh, is this a cultural thing? Why? Uh, they are totally branch? different animals. Do you think so? I don't <laughs> know. I, I have to do with pay. I heard that uh, maybe judicial pay is better or it have to do with intricacy. I don't know. But this is a thing that we should be studying. Mm. But having said this, remember the Korean case. Mm. If the political system is hopeless, it's not going to be fixed in matter of day or a few years, mm. then political uh, public service should be open up for private participation, mm. the big and the quick fix mm. for this um, mm. uh, subtle failure for Thailand mm. in terms of education is to study on uh, how our health education uh, have been, our, yeah. our health Since the politicians are not going to change and we can't put them in a school for re-education. <laughs> Can the private sector just go on to continue to develop its own way because the private sector uh, has more flexibility, has more innovation. You earlier cited the case of Korea, South Korea. It has a very vibrant private sector but a very uh, backward political system. Still, South Korea has thrived and, and become a very developed country, becoming a member of the OECD group. Um, i give you one example. Um, on October 1st this year, the uh, civil for one now is allowed 
to use the um, uh, private hospital for their you know health care, mm. which is basically uh, it's going to be paid by Thai government. Mm. And later on, the uh, controller department of mm. um, Ministry of Finance will purchase a health care insurance for the group, civil so one group. Mm -hmm. And you know, this it's is like a lump sum payment. Lump sum payment. So this is a win-win situation, right? Mm. Uh, the, the government have a very tight control on what they have to pay per year, mm. okay? Number two, the uh, private sector, private hospital have, mm. a, have a big business to do. Mm -hmm. And the, the, um, the last thing would be the user the health user actually basically mm. uh, have a good services. Mm. Same thing can be applied to education. Mm. If our primary education is more open up mm. to, uh, um, to a private sector mm. in more or less a public private partnership, mm. maybe this is a way to go mm. instead of just waiting for that. Yeah. My last question to you, do we have any hope going forward? Do you think that we are going to be better off over the next three to five years judging by the development you know in this country that you have been witnessing so far there is always a hope if we can recognize there's a problem and something that can be done and something cannot be done and something is more practical in thailand we have to start thinking more in terms of private lead or private public private partnership in some of the sector that we have to that's about it for our program thank you very much dr pong sak for participating